Hi, and welcome back to Mingus on Tech. I'm Ken Mingus, Executive Editor at Computer World. I'm here with senior writer Lucas Mirian, Mr. Blockchain. We're going to be talking about blockchain and carbon credits, of all things. So stick around. Okay, and we're back. Uh, Lucas, thanks for being here. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, or the thing I wanted to talk talk about today, is this story that uh, you've been working on involving, I mean, as we know, blockchain is popping up in lots of different places, right. unusual places. I mean, supply chain, of course, and smart contracts, and healthcare, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you you came across a story about an effort to tie blockchain to Carbon credits, right. which is you know a, a big issue right now for a lot of companies, uh, with concerns ongoing about global warming and companies trying to figure out what they can do to uh, reduce their carbon footprint. Right. Um, apparently, there's now an effort to try to tie blockchain to carbon offsets in a way that I, I it just sounded fascinating to me that now blockchain is even popping up in in the the fight uh, against global warming. You know, so. I know you're still researching this right. and still looking into it, but uh, I wanted to, it, it just sounded so fascinating. I just wanted to pick your brain for a minute about what we think we know about this. And, you know, so what do we know? <laughs> so uh, often uh, times, I'm, as t is being done today on, on blockchain and crypt through cryptocurrencies, yeah. uh, commodities are being tokenized. Okay. So what they're looking to do is create these digital tokens that represent, represent carbon credits. What's a carbon credit? Carbon credit is basically equal to one ton of carbon dioxide emission. Okay. So a company that's emitting uh, or is burning fossil fuels to operate emits so much carbon dioxide. Uh, that amount of carbon dioxide is capped under various regulations throughout the world, mm -hmm. uh, including the United States. And in order to exceed that cap, you need to buy additional credits. Where do you get the additional credits from companies that don't use all their credit, all, all their credits in order to uh, achieve a cap? Okay. So they can purchase these uh, credits on uh, exchanges today, but the process of tracking how many credits you have, you know, how much uh, carbon dioxide you're, you're emitting is very manual. They have to hire outside accounting consultancies, and oftentimes the numbers don't match, and yep. it can be a very expensive process. So what IBM and this company, Viridium Labs, is working on is not just a way to tokenize the credits, but to c create an automated accounting system for companies that are on this open ledger you know, uh, blockchain open. That, that's the and that's the whole point with blockchain. That that you know, again, and I, I know we've talked about this before, but the whole the fact that you can create this sort of immutable chain of records that can be sort of governed by the entities involved in the blockchain, mm -hmm. which would allow various parties here, you know, the carbon the companies that want the carbon credits, the ones that are getting rid of them, mm -hmm. to keep track of, of where those carbon credits are and how they're how they're mounting, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And the, the carbon credits I think they're they're gonna start with are called red plus credits. And they're basically very valuable credits tied to deforestation around the world. So uh, uh, red, which is uh, reducing emission from deforestation and uh, degradation uh, is an attempt to make uh, keeping trees alive more valuable than burning forests for creating pasture lands or, or, or industry or whatever. So they're trying to make uh, the carbon emissions more expensive than it would be to leave the forests alone. So you buy these credits. In this case, the red credits are being, are being represented by a company that owns a lot of these credits in, from, in the South Pacific. Okay. Uh, so, initially, that's how, what they're going to do. They're going to tokenize these particular credits, and then they're hoping to include other credits as they expand, as the network goes online, which is expected to go online, they're hoping, later this year. Okay. You know, it's interesting that, uh, you know, just as we were talking about this, uh, uh, setting up uh, today's episode, I spotted a story over on Forbes that uh, literally just came out today talking about how Ben & Jerry, Ben & Jerry's is trying to tie blockchain to their own efforts to offset carbon. I, who, who, who knew Ben & Jerry's with, you know, I, 
I like my ice cream. I didn't know it had lots of carbon <laughs> in it. I know, but the, the, it's all it's it's the same sort of thing. And what it does is it it somehow you can use the blockchain. I think the one that they're looking at is uh, the Stellar blockchain, which yeah, it's is the same one that same IBM one that IBM is would be using. Yeah, right. And what they do is they they basically peg every ice cream purchase becomes a microtransaction that is then somehow entered on the blockchain and then offset so that they can basically say for every scoop of ice cream, you know, one penny of this is going to go to offset credits, right. uh, which I thought was really interesting because, you know, obviously, uh, you know, the, the the thing with Viridian Labs is much more sort of industry specific, right. whereas the, it sounds like what Ben and Jerry's is doing is more sort of consumer facing. Yeah. Um, but it's just yeah. fascinating that... Uh, uh, you know, blockchain is now being used to to try to offset carbon credits and help it's, with global warming. It's just an efficient. It's open, so it, it, everybody can see what's going on. Uh, so it's a, it's a great uh, accounting method uh, because everybody can see what everybody else on that blockchain is doing. How many? So, for example, I'll give you a, yeah. a, a simple example. Let's say I have a company and I send a ship across the Atlantic for the purposes of um, you know supply. 10 times. Mm -hmm. And so I have to figure out how much carbon dioxide that ship is burning by going across the Atlantic 10 times. If you were to multiply that by an enormous company that sends you know, hundreds of ships thousands of times across mm -hmm. the oceans, that gets very complex. By, by putting all that information on a blockchain, it's easier to track. And you can use smart contracts, which are basically a um, uh, business automation tool that's self-executing. Right. So as the shipments are being made, it's automatically updating the blockchain with how much carbon dioxide you're emitting. Wow, in real time, in would real it, time. or near real time, I guess. Yeah, it, basically real time, yeah. It's interesting, too, because uh, one of the things that's that's noted in this Forbes story, and this reminds me of something you wrote about a, a while back, maybe last year, that uh, another uh, area that blockchain is being viewed as uh, you know, where it could be used is in uh, selling of solar power. Right. And remember that the, there was I think it was in Brooklyn there yeah. was some some operation was basically calculating, you know, solar power and, and using a blockchain. And it's just now that sort of seems to be um, advancing beyond just like one little operation in Brooklyn yeah. to you know, more global uses, you know. Yeah, again, calculating automatically how much power you're using, how much of that power is being purchased through solar panels. And they were setting up these exchanges where you could actually exchange credits to businesses for that. It was, it was, a, it was a fascinating idea. I have not checked back in on that because I haven't been doing my sustainable energy beat for some time. But right. it, it, it was a fascinating use of blockchain. And so was this. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I know you're still looking at it. Yeah. We're going to have a story on this uh, sometime in the next few days. But it just it struck me as really interesting that blockchain is now being seen this way. And again, it's it's another example of how this technology, you know, when we first started really covering this about a year ago, there was a lot of talk about how blockchain was going to be so disruptive, potentially as disruptive as the internet was in the 1990s. And, you know, there was a lot of pushback on that. But I'm starting to see how in, in a lot of different ways in a lot of different industries, um, this is going to, it's almost like an entirely new platform. Absolutely. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We haven't, it, it could take decades before this really develops. A lot of people have also compared it to open source software, mm -hmm. and we know how long that took to develop. I mean, people scoffed at it in the 1990s, but it's everywhere now. Uh, it's it's going to be very similar, but it could take you know, years, if not decades, to develop because most of the projects today are still pilot projects. Right. Uh, or very limited projects, uh, uh, you know, online projects that they're actually doing for, say, cross-border trading or um, or mon monetary exchange. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're still testing it out. They're still dipping their toes in the water. It seems like a very secure platform, sans some of the software that's sometimes written on top of it, but the blockchain platform itself is very secure. So th they're, they're still trying to figure out its, its weaknesses and strengths and how they can apply it to business. But, yeah, I would say, you know, just on my, my own limited knowledge of, of where this is going, it's probably going to touch just about every industry you can, you can think of. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting, too. Uh, uh, every time I, I see stories about blockchain, it seems like IBM is somewhere nearby. IBM was one of the first service providers and... Um, um, Service providers and, uh, um, for better lack of a better word, uh, consultancy mm -hmm. for blockchain uh, technology. And so 
what they have allowed companies to do is, again, using the term dip their toes in the water without having to build out their own infrastructure, without having to build out their own hardware, their servers for, uh, for blockchains. Uh, they can provide a service, an online service, to use blockchain. So you can try out blockchain using this service without having to uh, experience all the capital expenditure right. you would. They, they, they sort of do all the, uh, the dirty work for you, and then right. you can come in and on top of that, experiment with it and see how it's going to work for your industry. Exactly. And now I guess uh, it's carbon footprint, carbon uh, next footprint. step for blockchain. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Lucas, thanks a lot for the update. I really appreciate it. Um, for now, that's a wrap on blockchain. Cool.